All right, guys, so um, I'm taking a trip to Bahamas with my boat, and I want to give you guys a quick video guide on what I'm doing to prepare. So first I went to a website I'm going to provide in the show notes, but I am downloaded the um, Bahamas Pleasure ves Vessel um, custom papers. And there's about five pieces of paper here. The one thing is they are on legal sheets, so I had to go to the store and buy legal paper. But I print that out ahead of time. Second thing I need is a yellow quarantine flag. So when I come into Bahamas, I put that up until it's been cleared by customs. Just lets everyone know that I have not yet been cleared by customs. And then lastly, you're gonna need your passport and you're also gonna need your boat registration, um, which is gonna be a piece of paper. Um, I have it uh, over here, a document with um, all your information. Um, might be from your state, or if it's a United States Coast Guard documented vessel, it'd be that sheet. If not, it'd be like your registration, your state registration, if you have stickers on the side of your boat. So depending on how big your boat is and things like that, and what state you're in, you that would vary depending on the state. So those are things you're gonna need. Of course, you're gonna need to make sure the weather is good. So I've looked at my weather forecast for tomorrow, very small waves. I'm gonna provide a couple links as well to where you wanna look for those waves height. Basically you're looking for wave and wind height. So those are the two important things that you're gonna be looking for. And the Gulf Stream, you're gonna be looking from your port departure and the port you arrive at. We're going to the west end in Bahamas um, first and that's basically where you get custom clearance. And it's also the shortest point from, excuse me, from Palm Beach to Bahamas. So. We're planning on taking about three and a half to three hour drive, going about 30 miles per hour using our boat. And we're on this Monterey boat here. So we uh, are at sunset right now. And gonna get some, grab some dinner. But we're planning on leaving right at sunrise, like seven in the morning, just get up and go in case something happens with one of the engines or something like that. Uh, we can still make it on one engine. You don't wanna wait till last minute and then be driving in the dark for sure. All right guys, I'll, I'll give you, uh, keep you updated as we arrive in the progress. All right, so we're heading out this morning. It's about nine o'clock, headed to Bahamas. Just untied the dock. Got uh, Peanut Island on the right. And gonna be leaving the mouth uh, out to the ocean very soon. Okay, so here we're leaving um, West Palm Beach. Again, we slept over uh, the, as close as we could so we'd have a quick drive over to the West End in Bahamas. Um, the weather was blowing, the wind was blowing against us, which made the beginning first hour a bit slow. We actually, um, because the wind was directly against us, it was blowing maybe 12 to 14 miles per hour, peaking up to 20. Um, and the wave height was between two to three feet. Um, but that's your average. When you read those wave height, you can have double that. So potentially you can go up to six feet sometimes. Um, so because of that, we had to start off slow. Uh, otherwise, the boat was hitting kind of hard and, and you know, just is a rough ride. So we just went um, about 10 to 12 miles per hour, maybe the first, first hour. And then after that, the waves uh, started spreading out. So we were able to speed up to about 20 miles per hour. And we went what about 20 miles per hour for the next hour. And then, then it actually got really smooth. As we started getting closer to Bahamas, it started really smoothing out. And we were able to go 30 miles per hour, 35 max that last hour. So again, if the wind was with us, um, coming from the behind us, uh, to going towards Bahamas, it would have been a dis different scenario. We would have been able to go faster at get-go. Or if the wind was going... Um, up, you just any direction besides at us, it would have been a, a lot different because as soon as the wind comes at you, the waves are coming at you, and it's a much more difficult ride, um, which is fine as long as the wind's not super strong. If the wind was 20 to 30 miles per hour with this particular boat, it probably you know would have done a different day, uh, and the wave height is very important as well. So things to consider. But overall, boat handled it great. Um, the one thing was when we did arrive in Bahamas. Um, one of the headboards actually did fall down. So there was some small damage just due to the waves and stuff like that, but nothing that was too difficult to fix. The engines held up great, which is always, you know, my biggest concern is losing an engines or both engines because you're in the middle of the ocean. And we pretty much did not see any boats the whole time uh, that we went out there. 
and even traveling around Bahamas, very, very few boats. Um, of course, we have a, a radio, we can call for help. Our cell phones stopped working about maybe 30 minutes out. Um, we lost all cell phone reception. Another thing I recommend you do is get a SIM card before you hit Bahamas. I just assume we go to any marina or any place and just pick up a SIM card in Bahamas and throw it in our phones. That is not true at all. You have to go to a, a BTC store, which are very difficult to find. So um, definitely get your SIM card like mailed to you ahead of time. Um, and, and that way you'll have cell phone coverage that was just kind of a pain trying to find a cell phone store. Um, the West End itself, there's not much going on. Really nice place, resort, but there's not much going on. So we stayed there for one night and then took off. Um, I'm going to show you some pictures of, of the trip um, that we had in Bahamas. And I, I mean, Bahamas was one of the most beautiful places we've ever taken the boat. And I actually liked it so much that we, we kept it there, uh, left it in Bahamas and Marsh Harbor um, for about a month. Um, before bringing it back to, to, to the States. So um, the, when you get the customs paper, you can say how long you want to stay for. Um, they'll give you a uh, clearance for up to a year. And if you're under um, a certain size, I uh, believe it's under 35 feet, then it's uh, $150. If you're over 35 feet, then it's going to be um, more than that. I think it's a $300 charge. And that allows you to have a certain amount of fishing poles, go fishing. Um, I don't really do much fishing, but if you were to, that would cover that charge for that. Um, I have to say, though, the customs, super friendly, super nice, very relaxed. Um, if you've ever come into America, on the other hand, they can be pretty strict and pretty intimidating. But on the Bahamas side, they're more friendly um, and just were very helpful. Some of the paperwork I didn't fill out exactly. I didn't know what the questions were saying. And they were able to kind of help me out and fill that out without being high pressure, high stress. Um, and knowing that was my first time, you know, they were very friendly and nice about that. So I'd have to say that customs were by far one of the friendliest customs. I've also, Canada is also very friendly as well when you go to Canada. I always feel like going, entering the United States, even though I'm from America, they always look at you like you're doing something wrong. So that's just what I feel. Okay, so we made it to the West End, Bahamas. We checked in. Um, first, we gassed up, actually. This yellow, yellow gas up station. Right there, gassed up there. And then we asked uh, where to check in. And they said to check in at this yellow building right here. So that's the customs check-in. And then after that, we just got a spot for the night. Um, it's basically $2 a foot and then they charge you with power and electricity. So this will just let us check this place out. We're gonna get some food, um, check the restaurant out. The one thing we wish we would have done is get SIM cards because they didn't have any SIM cards um, at the front desk. So we're gonna see if we can find them, but if not, we're just gonna use the free guest Wi-Fi. Finally, you leave me a comment, I love those. Really appreciate it, have a great day guys.